what's up? It's Forever 20 Piece here. <laughs> Another episode of Driving with 20. And um, I do want to apologize in advance for any road noise you might hear. I don't, I don't know how good or bad the audio quality is going to be because this is a rental. It's a 2020 Dodge Ram, so it's uh, fairly easy driving. It's got the, it's got a Hemi, so <laughs> plenty of power and all that. But um, yeah, I'm on the road. Uh, I had to go back to St. Louis for the weekend to attend my uh, grandmother's funeral, my last living grandparent, and um, she was 90. Really good woman. Um, and yeah, you know, it just kind of got me thinking. And sometimes that's dangerous, but <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, she it, this wasn't unexpected. I mean, she had been in poor health for for years now, declining health for uh, declining health for probably close to a decade and poor health for the last five years and then last two years or eh, maybe not last two but last year not doing too hot so this wasn't unexpected it just um you know it's, it's not even if even if you're you know you have a relative that's old or sick and you're you know you, you in, maybe not expect but anticipate them dying you know it's still not an easy thing but um so yeah so that's where I'm heading, and uh, it kind of got me reminiscing, you know, because my grandmother was like the this particular grandmother was, you know, more of what you would think of as far as a traditional type housewife who supported her husband, you know, um, and she did work two outside of the home, but, you know, she cooked, she cleaned, she did all that shit. My grandpa didn't do any of that type of stuff. Um, or very, well, very minimal. I'm not going to say he never fucking cooked or cleaned, but she did the majority of it. And, you know, he did shit that the guys, you know, typically would do. Take care of the house, to fucking work on a car, yard, all that shit, you know. Maintenance and any of that type of stuff. So, it was more of a what you would think of, of a, as a 1950s, 60s, 70s traditional American household, and um, it just, it had me kind of, you know, reminiscing on, on, on that type of stuff, and my past uh, blue pill mindset, so, <laughs> yeah, interesting, interesting, uh, I don't know. It, it's just just going back and, and reflecting on things. Sometimes it, uh, I'm not I'm not gonna bullshit you or lie. I mean, I do have some nostalgia for my old uh, blue pill type ways. Not not being played out and fucking fucked over nostalgia, but I'm talking like um, you know um, these motherfuckers. We're gonna get on a fucking driving around here too if this if this keeps up much longer. But uh, <laughs> here we go. I want to get past these motherfuckers. <laughs> I was looking to see if there was a cop there first before I floored it. Um, but yeah. Um, anyway, <laughs> before I was so impolitely distracted by people who don't know how to fucking drive. Um, Anyway, so the, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, you know, I do have some fondness, fond memories from my, from the, the blue pill times that I lived in. And I, again, I'm not going to bullshit you or, or any viewer, you know, I, there's, there's times every once in a while, you know, I, I do miss having a, you know, a girlfriend or a woman in my life, but I, it just, when I compare my two experiences of, you know, girlfriend versus non-girlfriend life, uh, you know, or, or single, whatever you call it, bachelor, MGTOW, um, I, 
I mean, when I compare the two, I'm, uh, you, you know, the, the majority, I'm not, you know, nobody's fucking 100% happy all the time, but I think I'm overall, well, I not think, I know I'm overall happier with my experiences when I've been single. Excuse me. And, th- and I'm talking like, oh, comparatively speaking, you know, maybe you don't know, but when I say comparison, <coughs> excuse me, fuck, I could be getting that COVID, but, <laughs> but, um, uh, that's a side note, it's gonna piss me off at this fucking funeral, because I think they're gonna make everybody wear fucking masks, but, um, I'm not gonna refuse to go to my grandmother's funeral, funeral because I gotta wear a fucking mask, but normally I would just say fuck it with this mask shit, but anyway, squirrel sidetrack shit. What I was saying though was in comparison, I look at the relationships and you know, you got like just a bunch of fucking bullshit. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me that, that has deal, that's that had the deal with bullshit, but God damn it, these motherfuckers. But anyway, so I'm just joking there. I know every guy has dealt with some type of bullshit that anyone that's been in a, a relationship with a woman has, at least. So I just look at it comparative, comparatively, and my my life is so much more in my control and my happiness is in my control with with the lifestyle that I'm living now. And granted, you know, no one, I can't make somebody fucking happy and, and no, no other person's going to make me happy. I, I got that. But it's, it's more about the, oh, I don't know. I guess it's just a reminiscing thing. And it's, you know, I think back on past relationships and uh, you know, there's a certain fondness to it, but then when I, like I said, evaluate the entire situation, it's it's just like, yeah, I definitely overall like the the situation that I'm in now um, and the mindset. So now I'm a type of person who who never says never. I'm not gonna completely rule out any that I'll ever, you know, I'm not, I don't consider myself a monk, but I mean, I've had some people in the comments be like, hey, you know, hey, that's cool, you live in that monk lifestyle, I mean, I, I'm just mainly against cohabitation and marriage uh, for me, now if that works for you, great, but um, it hasn't worked for me, I mean, I've never been married and I, I never will get married, but that that's something I will say never on. <laughs> <laughs> but on most things, I, I don't say never. I'm not an absolutist type uh, person. But, um, you know, because some things can change. And, you know, you leave it open. But I don't say anything with marriage changing to where there, that it would ever appeal to me, for one. And then, two, finding somebody that I would actually like to marry. You know, other than it being, like, something that would really benefit me personally and I'm talking more than sex it would have to be I don't know I find some sugar fucking mama and and she's just like gonna leave me all this fucking money or something but even then I don't I I really I I wouldn't want to do it for that I mean that 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 would be immoral in my mind but hey teach their own (laughs) yeah but um so yeah I don't know. Like I said, I mean, I know I'm kind of rambling and all over the place, but that's par for the course with this channel and my content. <laughs> but yeah, that just kind of had me thinking and just kind of reflecting and looking back on the past and, you know, family members that have come and go. And it's just, uh, yeah, it's always a interesting time. Plus, it's gotten to the point with my family, um, l- largely with my family, that uh, 
the only time the family really get the the overall larger extended family gets together is, is at times like these anymore you know, it's kind of a shame but it's the truth you know and um man we used to do all kinds of shit together we used to go on float trips and camping and had all kinds of fun in the Ozarks and get together for the holidays and it's a good time but that was mostly when I was a kid and, um, younger teenagers but most mostly when I was you know, uh, 13 and younger is when all those really good family memory fam, uh, family family memories <laughs> happened and um yeah, but, but about that time, uh, pretty much everybody on this side of the family, well, on both sides of my family, is, you know, my parents and their siblings are pretty much all baby boomers. And so you know what that means, don't you? <laughs> that means they've all been married multiple times and fucking divorced multiple times. So <laughs> go figure, right? And... Um, like I said, about that time in the mid 80 mid eighties to early nineties, that's about when everybody, um, all of my aunts and uncles, and to include my parents, had either been divorced or were getting divorced. And coincidentally, um, a lot of that family type shit ceased. Not completely ceased, but it 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 slowly. Um, can't think of the right word, but it slowly went away, and to the point now where the yeah, there are some some points where the family gets together. Like, you know, they get together, but it's more smaller groups. It's not the entire family like it used to be. It used to be a pretty big event. It was a pretty uh, sight to see a lot of people. But um, you know, part of it, I'm not going to blame that all on divorce. You know, some of that is people. Uh, some people moved away and granted once the grandkids like me uh, not like me but my fellow grandchildren started having children you know it did kind of get to the point where it was going to be just it would have been fucking ridiculous if everybody showed up but um, I don't know it, I mean that, that could just be a natural thing with everybody's family but I don't know uh, I can only tell you my experience. So, and then you know, eventually, even I moved away. But uh, <laughs> multiple reasons there. I didn't move. From, I didn't really didn't move because of my family. I, I moved to um, find my own path, I guess. You know, and uh, that was one of the reasons. And. Another reason I moved out of St. Louis is kind of uh, some of the fun that's going on in Minneapolis and Louisville now. Uh, <laughs> we got to experience that, some of those good times in uh, Ferguson, Missouri, uh, and, you know, a few years back, and I, I was in the thick of all that shit. I mean, I wasn't down there fucking protesting or nothing, but I remember it very well. And that was the um, being given dirty looks by certain people just because of the way I look. And I, I didn't appreciate that because I don't, I, I, I won't say I don't. I try not to prejudge people by the way someone looks. But at some point, I mean, if there's a, you gotta weigh your own risks, you know, in life. Each person's got their, their own decisions to make, but, um, but yeah, I, I don't, I typically don't just assume because of the way somebody looks, that's their personality or the way they are, you know. Now, they open their mouth and the way they act, that may confirm <laughs> a stereotype, but, um, I, I typically, uh, try not to, to go down a, uh, prejudicial route uh, in my line of thinking but um, yeah so all that shit 
that's when I first started uh, really getting, I was already interested in guns and been in the Army and done firearms training, but that's when I really stepped up my game with firearms training and finally got my concealed carry permit that, you know, that, that all that shit pushed me over the edge, basically, and um, from that point forward, almost started carrying a weapon every day. These motherfuckers. I think this is a fucking cop in front of me. But, um, so yeah, I was, that, that's when I started doing that, and, uh, I gotta re reset my fucking, uh, I got a, a fucking cruise control. <clears throat> Apologize for that. <clears throat> this isn't my vehicle, so I can set my on my on my personal vehicle. I can set my cruise without fucking look taking my eyes off the road. But and here's another little sidebar. <laughs> yeah, from doing a lot of traveling in the army and flying all over the country and renting different vehicles. You know, I get to try out different cars. Well, and then I used to be a mechanic too, so when I was in the mechanic world, I get to try out different vehicles and find out what I like and I don't like. I can tell you I don't like this fucking cruise control setup on this Dodge Ram, but um, personal opinion and first world problems. So <laughs> now that my cop, that cop broke my fucking train of thought. Let me see what I was getting back to. Um, God damn it. My memory is shit. <clears throat> Probably a from all the years of abuse that I put it through. But, <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, so I was kind of on the firearms thing there. And, and you know, current events kind of stoked that. But I, getting back to, you know, moving. And, and it goes back to MGTOW stuff, though. And uh, that's... You know, it finally let me be my own man in a way, and um, I don't know. I like to think that I've always kind of thought for myself, but that ain't the truth, you know. So, um, especially being in the military, you know, I have people think for me still, but I, as you get higher in rank, it's weird, because when you're lower in rank, they want you to, to just follow orders blindly, <clears throat> unless it's unlawful, but the higher up you get, then then eventually they want you to start fucking thinking again, and having critical thinking skills, <laughs> so, uh, it's just an interesting um, phenomenon that I've experienced, but, so yeah, um, but MGTOW helped me out a lot, and kind of, I know I'm way into this video, but the point, my original point of this video was two points, you know, I was reminiscing, you know, kind of about Blue Pill days, and then, um, also I had, um, thought, I was just thinking about how, you know, hindsight's 2020, and, and I just wanted to... I don't know how many younger people watch this channel, but whether it's men or women, I would say, you know, I'm not like a person who's like, just go for your dreams, you know, uh, you, you do whatever you want and follow your heart and all this shit and your, you know, money will follow and I... I'm not like an idealist like that per se, and I'm probably not explaining it right, but, but what I'm saying is, is if you have a dream or a passion or something that you want to go for, I actually, I mean, I guess I'm contradicting myself right now, but because I'm not explaining it correctly, I can't think of the right words, but I, if you are not married, um, preferably if you, if you're not married or, and have never been married, but if you don't have any children and you're currently not married, I would say, you know, if, if there's something you want to do, I would just just go for it, you know. Um, 
and don't and not to let family ties or a geographic location or something like that hold you down to keep you somewhere or a job or anything like that just to, to keep you pinned down to a certain location and to keep that that would prevent you from pursuing your dreams or doing something that you want to do and I love playing fucking back and forth road tag with motherfuckers who don't know how to use a cruise control more road rage driving with 20 so I'd love it if it was like we could have like a twisted metal fucking reality where I have fucking 50 cal fucking or some mini guns fucking on, on each fender out front and I could just fucking blow people away that don't, don't know how to drive. Um, <laughs> I get sidetracked too easy. But, yeah, so getting back to what I was trying to say. Um, not so eloquently, by the way. Was, yeah, if you're younger, you're not tied down to anything... And you and you know red pill shit. You're you're familiar with MGTOW knowledge, red pill knowledge. And and you want to take a fucking year off and go tour the travel the country or hit every national park or go hiking or or whatever. Or you're an, an active duty and just for example in the army and you don't like your fucking job, your MOS is boring. Fucking change your MOS. Do something different. Go to fucking ranger school go airborne, do, do whatever, I mean, don't limit yourself, I guess, I guess that's the point of my, this kind of second point <laughs> I was trying to make, it's just, I don't know, I wish I'd had some, someone to, I wish, I wish I were a little bit taller, I wish I were a baller, <laughs> we can wish in one hand and shit in the other and see which one fills up first, but yeah, yeah, I got that, I got that, but, um, I don't know. I kind of circling back a little bit. Hindsight's twenty twenty, and man, if I could have just heard about MGTOW shit when I was thirty, I don't know. But um, it is what it is. But uh, or whether they called it MGTOW or Red Pill, if I had had some of that influence or a mentor like that influence me at a younger age. I would have, it would have been uh, a godsend, but in a way it was a godsend when I got it, you know, at uh, my late 30s, but um, better late than never, I suppose, but for you guys out there, though, that are younger, in your teens, 20s, 30s, man, while you're still younger, if you got something you want to do and you're not tied down, Go for it, man. That's what I'm trying to say. Just fucking go for it. Uh, I, I mean, and you might fail and you might crash and burn, but you won't know unless you try. And, um, yeah. I don't know. You know, the, the reminiscing and, and the... I guess it's all, I don't know. It kind of got me thinking about regrets, too, but... You know, I'm sure I would imagine almost everyone has regrets in life. It's uh, <laughs> in one way or another. But um, yeah, and, and, and don't take this the wrong way either. I'm not saying that because I'm the age that I am in my mid 40s ish that um, life's fucking over. I'm not saying that. I just, I don't know. I look at it more as like a wasted time type thing. And um, I still waste time now, but I, I, overall I have become more focused on maximizing it to its uh, to the potential that it has. And we'll see how it works out. But <laughs> yeah, but yeah, so that's kind of what I was thinking. But, um, yeah. Good 
at times, so. But yeah, I don't know. Just, uh, like I said, my um, grandmother's passing had me kind of in a, an unusual mindset recently. And um, driving here has given me plenty of time to think. So, I live about, depends how, how, you, how fast you drive, how bad traffic is, but you can make it from where I live to St. St. Louis in about five hours. Now, that's probably about the absolute fastest you can make it. Um, unless you were just going fucking crazy speeding and, and happen to get lucky and not run into any cops. That's the only other way you would be able to do it <clears throat> faster than five hours. But safely, you can make it in about five and a half hours. And then if you drive like my mom does, which is like five miles under the speed limit, um, <laughs> or ten, <laughs> you make it about six hours. <laughs> six and a half. <laughs> Yeah, my mom. God love her. But, uh, anyway, these fucking motherfuckers. Uh, yeah. Well, if I don't die of an aneurysm from high blood pressure on this trip to and from St. Louis, uh, <laughs> I suppose I'll see y'all soon in another video. But, um, yeah, bottom line, if you got, to, well, in conclusion and to recap, if there's something you want to do, go for it. I, one other thing I forgot to mention was I, and so maybe this won't be the conclusion, but I, um, in a way, because I didn't plan or have a direction that I wanted to go, Really, until I was about 30, I didn't. I was. I was really just kind of wandering aimlessly, aimlessly through life. Not that I have everything fucking planned and figured out now, but I have a lot more planning involved than, than there used to be. Um, and it, well, especially at the, you know, prior to 30, there wasn't any fucking planning at all. So <laughs> it was just uh, um, traipsing through life. Um, so to speak, and so, like I said, and because of that, and my, the blue pill world, and the blue pill mindset that I was in, you know, I stayed at jobs longer than I probably should have, not being paid enough for what I was doing, because I sold myself short, and didn't have the self-confidence to know what my value was, and not just only at work, but in relationships, too, <clears throat> um, apologize for the, uh, <clears throat> crutch words in my throat, and coughing, and sneezing, but, so, and what, and kind of what I'm talking about, I mean, the jobs, employment, relationships, those are two of the things that I, some of them, some of them I put up with shit I shouldn't have, or drugged them out longer than were useful and another thing was tying myself down to a location like my former home of record in the St. Louis metro area and I had a house at one point and it was cool I liked it um, but at the same time, I, I really didn't need a house. I mean, I, I didn't have a family. It was just me. I mean, I, I did have live-in girlfriends from time to time, but, you know, I don't know. But, I, I mean, I do like having, and the place I live in now is kind of like a house. It's about the size of a small house, but I, townhouse, really, I guess you could call it that, but. I don't know, I just, I'm just throwing shit out there, I'm not saying don't get a house, don't buy a house if you're single, but just think about, it. is that what you really want, and if it is, cool, um, but especially when you're younger, don't, don't put limits on yourself, um, 
self, especially self-imposed limitations, because those sometimes can be the worst, at least from my experience. Apologize for all the distractions. <clears throat> Gonna pass these cocksuckers. <sighs> From another video, unrelated to this one, there's this guy called Casey. Putch, P-U-S-T-C-H. I might not be pronouncing that correctly, but he has some videos where he talks about driving etiquette. Um, and this is, again, my opinion and his opinion. But the fast lane is for fucking passing. And once you pass somebody, get the fuck over if you, if, if, and, and go with the flow of traffic. If you're not going faster than fucking people in the fast lane, stay out of the fucking fast lane. <sighs> Again, if you don't like that, fine. Thumbs down, unsub. That's my opinion. But <laughs> and I hate fucking driving. But anyway, you already know that. So um, if I can stay on track for more than one fucking minute, the... And this is why I'm just using this, this time to make a video. It's not because I necessarily like making driving videos. Um, mainly because I get distracted too easily. But So, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it's not just the house. It's, it's anything that limits your, your the way you think or put limitations on yourself or restricts, I, I would meant to say restricts the way you think. Self-limitation tying yourself down especially when you're younger but it still can apply at any point at any point in your life but excuse me but the um, yeah just just if you got something you want to do go for it you know especially if you like I was saying if you if you have no obligations like children or a wife or alimony or a, sh a shitload of debt, you you really have, I mean, opportunities out there to to um, do things you want and make the most of your life. So, although I would say also if, if you're happy, I mean, <clears throat> where you're at and your situation and you're not doing some of the things I'm talking about.